today we're talking about anemones and it's it's a big uh topic i feel like it's a big or a highly researched topic especially when people are looking into okay i can keep fish in my aquarium i can keep uh corals in my aquarium can i keep anemones can i keep anemones with coral what fish are good to have with anemones in the tank if i put anemones in my tank are they just going to eat the fish like so hopefully we can provide some guidance today and talk about like maybe how compatible they are within the reef aquarium or within certain saltwater tanks absolutely yeah so let's dive in here just a briefing on anemones you know anemones are organisms uh similar to even like zoanthids and corals themselves uh it's pretty much just one giant polyp pretty much and they host you know shrimp uh clownfish crabs uh, a couple other different organisms uh, use them for protection because obviously they have stinging nematocyst. They're also closely related to jellyfish in that manner. Oh yeah, they're just super unique and it's something to put in your tank, you know, that can definitely be that wow factor. Uh, but there is a few cautionary uh, aspects that come along with purchasing anemones for your reef tank. Yeah, and so which anemone do you want to start with? Stu, the most common one that you probably see in the hobby, the bubble tip. All right. So bubble tip anemone is probably one of the most gorgeous anemones, really, uh, as far as uh, blue light tanks, especially. Mm -hmm. uh because you can get them in almost any color you can think of uh depending on price like, i've seen bright yellow ones uh just like this one this looks like a little hawaiian punch or something like there's so many different names for all these and then now it's crazy rose greens purples mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of cool colors and they're one of the more easy anemones you know to maintain they're pretty hardy uh, especially now that they've actually been aquacultured and they've been grown in captivity for so long uh, so they can be a good you know first anemone choice uh, especially if you have a tank that's more dominated with blue light because you're going to be able to appreciate it more uh, than some of these other anemones that we're going to mention but yeah perk to this it's relatively easy to keep i still wouldn't add them you know uh, right away to your tank. I would wait a few months, let your tank establish, see how some of your corals are doing, if they're doing good and growing out, maybe throw in the cheap bubble tip and see how, you, how it goes. Uh, one caution I would say with these specifically is they're going to move until they're happy. Mm -hmm. like, they're going to move around the tank and find the spot that has good flow for them and just write them on the light. Uh, so just be cautious with that and yeah some people even like you know uh cycle their tank without anything in it and throw some fish in there and put the anemone in there a few months down the road without any coral just to kind of see where the anemone will settle uh, especially if you're really big into anemones but if you do already have corals in your tank you're just gonna have to accept the fact that it's probably gonna end up walking over some of your corals uh, i've yep. had some sit in the same spot for a year and then all of a sudden they decide to move and sometimes they do it in the middle of the night you wake up the next morning and your bubble tips on the opposite side of the tank so it's it's no fun uh, but yeah. they are super cool and enemies and they're relatively easy to care for yeah they definitely are and they are some of the more easier anemones to keep and like you were mentioning that's what i recommend to people as well is if you can keep coral in your tank then your tank's probably ready for anemones you in my opinion you don't want to just throw it in there right off the bat right you mm -hmm. want to you want to get through the cycle you want to make sure you're doing well with corals with whatever you're keeping in your tank make sure you have an understanding of some of your tank parameters and stuff like that before you go throwing anemones in your tank but another key factor with like bubble tip anemones well with any anemone really is they like intense light mm -hmm. so you want to make sure you have the light that is if it's good enough to keep coral then it's probably good enough to keep an anemone bubble tip anemones they like to attach uh their foot to the rock work and they're going to like bury like burrow that foot down and around so once they lock in once they find a spot in your tank that they're happy with with the water flow more than likely they're going to stay there for a while but like you said after a year it decided to move and maybe something changed in your tank I know, I know for me, uh, I've had anemones hang out in the same spot of my reef tank for like three years plus, and then I would move a pump or something, or the water flow would change, and then they just started to move, or they would split and multiply, and then I would wake up and find like two anemones on the left side of the tank, one on the glass, getting like really close to my circulation pump and making me kind of sweat a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, bubble tip anemones are great, and they're fairly common in the hobby super popular and pretty easy to keep definitely yeah i mean they can be pretty cheap depending on what ones you're looking for you know like the simple green bubble tip probably run you like anywhere from 30 to like 75 bucks right in that range maybe a little yeah. more 
maybe even a little less. But yeah, once you start getting into like the Colorado Sunburst and like the Hawaiian Punch and all these other named uh, bubble tips, you're definitely going to run into some more pricey. If, it, yeah, if it's got a fancy country. name, it's going to be expensive. Yeah, absolutely. And then the next one we have here. Sea base. The sea base. So enemy. this is one of my personal favorite enemies. Uh, it's not the most colorful, especially for most of the people that have like a like a blue lit tank. Yeah. Uh, but for me, you know, my tanks are white most of the time, uh, and I enjoy a good sea bay anemone. They're relatively easy to get pretty much any wild clownfish to host in pretty quickly. Uh, I've always wanted to, you know, set up another tank with like a sea bay anemone and some like pink skunk clowns. I just think that'd be really cool. Uh, but these cool. anemones specifically, most of the time you're going to find them. They like to be in the sand. Uh, they'll bury their foot and usually attach to the bottom of your tank. Then they spread out kind of like a pizza over the sand. It's pretty cool. Uh, they get pretty big. Even if you purchase them and they're relatively small, they'll open up to a pretty large size. It's, I don't know. I just, every experience I've had with these anemones, they love the sand more than anything. They don't really attach the rock. I'm not sure why, and I'm not entirely sure where exactly they're collected specifically, but I'm guessing it's the sand bed because every time I see you know some footage of them uh like being filmed in the wild you know you see the sea bay on the sand with some cool clownfish uh but yeah these are yeah. really hardy in my experience too uh, okay back in the day this is one of the first anemones i ever kept and i put it in the tank like the second day and this is before i really knew much of anything okay um, all right but it lived and it did extremely well Interesting. Um, yeah i was not the greatest caretaker at that time yeah first, actually, i'm at least my experience is you see that sea bay anemones are a little more challenging to keep than like a bubble tip or a long tentacle but that that's cool that it did really well for you especially after just a couple of days you threw one of these in there yeah i've, I've never had any issues and i've kept quite yeah. a few of these specimens nice. but, i mean it could depend on the tank technically too and that's yeah. really with any of these anemones but yeah they're different they're unique and if you got a well-established tank and you want to try something different and you don't have an anemone yet, try a Bay if you want, you know, try yeah. something different. It, they don't really have much of any color though. So just keep that in mind, especially if you have like a reef tank where you're keeping corals that look really good with blue light, maybe steer away and try a bubble tip or something more colorful than these. I would say so far, all the anemones that we've talked about, you can try your hand at getting some clownfish to live in them right like yeah these, are, these will look really cool with the skunk clownfish i believe uh mark from me loves reef he added one in he had like a cr acrylic tube that he introduced his skunk clownfish in and it was just cool to see he directed them like right to the sea bay anemone and nice they loved it and he had like five of them or so, I believe, in, in there. And it was just really cool to see. But yeah, I love I love skunk clownfish. I got two in my bubble tip anemones right now and they're doing great. Awesome. If you enjoyed this video, then I know you're gonna love the full podcast episode. Go ahead and click or tap your screen to watch that. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. And I will see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk.